Hi, today we've got a video update for you on the CVT transmission which is becoming more popular on the Subaru range of models. So Subaru globally have moved away from the automatic transmission which is typically a design that has been around for many, many years and as new technology moves forward, the CVT transmission or constantly variable transmission is becoming more the norm. We've seen it in the turbo diesel Forester range, some of the Outbacks, more recently in the MY15 and now MY16 WRX, it's an option. Subaru have two size transmissions for this particular application, of course the bigger being the one that they use in the WRX, and then they also have them in the non-turbo range of the Subaru uh, XVs and the Imprezas and such like that. And behind me is a transmission out of a Subaru Impreza XV that is a bit over three and a half years old, and unfortunately this client um, has suffered from a little bit of premature wear on one of the uh, bearings inside the transmission has caused some very unusual noise due to age and kilometres the car's no longer covered by warranty we've been given the opportunity to do a gearbox rebuild for the client and I've got an opportunity now to show you what this transmission looks like inside so it's a really good opportunity to get an idea of the two different size transmissions but more importantly from your point of view just to understand how this transmission works if you're owning a Subaru wherever you are in the world and more importantly if you own a WRX Subaru with the CVT transmission because they uh, do have a limit on the amount of torque that they're designed to take and our estimate based on R&D and details and you'll find some info on our website is about 400 Newton metres. If you go over that the transmission slips and can't handle the torque and effectively, effectively you prematurely um, wear the transmission out and it starts causing all sorts of horrible uh, faults. So let's start at the start from a normal transmission point of view which is typical on auto transmissions is the transmission from the connection between the engine and the transmission is what you would typically call a classic torque converter which is a big vein inside here full of hydraulic fluid or gearbox oil that converts a drive input from the engine to the gearbox. Um, this is the sump pan which goes underneath the bottom of the transmission and internally when you take that off you would then see the internal filter which is removable and um, can be serviced from outside the car without pulling transmission out. But separately, internally, there is also another filter, and this is the old one here, um, which you can see is quite dirty, and the brand new one, which I'll get my video man to come around the side, and it's, it's buried right down inside here. So to change that filter, you've got to pull the whole transmission apart. So that gives you a bit of an idea of some of the internal parts. But this particular part here, which you, you can't hear the noise, but this is the culprit of what di allowed us to diagnose the problem with the transmission. This is the noisy uh, input bearing that, drop, that connects to one of the sprockets, um, which is on the, front of the on the front of the transmission. And you can see this part here, which is what turns, and this has got the new bearing in it now, it drives a little chain off the input shaft from the back of the engine that turns this drive shaft here which then in turn drives the internal oil pump to run the oil through the transmission. Now interestingly, you've got to remember, these cars also come with stop-start technology. Um, so when the car comes to a standstill after a certain period of time to save on fuel and give better fuel economy, the engine shuts down. But of course you need oil pressure and operating conditions within the transmission. So it has an internal electric oil pump which works in combination with a mechanical pump when the engine and the transmission is in normal operating conditions travelling down the road. It has an internal mechatronic unit which is sometimes called, called the valve body and that's effectively the electronic brain that controls the direction of all the hydraulic pressure throughout the internal parts of the transmission and also on the output shaft you can see here it also has uh, small clutch packs which is in a lot of ways very similar to what we've repaired but not quite as big on a Subaru SST, oh, sorry, a Mitsubishi Evo 10 SST transmission. Let's carefully put that back together. But then of course the part that I really want to show you is what the gearbox looks like itself. And this is the technology that is pretty cool because this is the main drive mechanism which is a, a really advanced belt drive between the input and the output shaft of the gearbox which constantly changes um, ratio to keep the car operating or the engine operating in its peak torque situation so when you're accelerating with road speed the engine stays at a constant speed and the transmission changes ratio electronically on the go without you actually having to change gears manually. You can put this gearbox in what they call manual mode and have it operate as a manual transmission 
but for maximum um, fuel economy and performance to keep it in its sweet spot for maximum torque, this is what changes. So this belt here um, expands and contracts and effectively moves in and out and changes the drive ratio. So at this point you've got a large diameter and a small diameter, but in the other operating condition it's a complete opposite. So you'll end up with a large diameter here and a small diameter here, hence changing the actual effective ratio of the gearbox. So um, this is the main input side of which this filter fits on when the gearbox is back together. And then of course you've got the main transmission housing which then fits over the top after we put the rest of the parts back in together. And then the, the back of the gearbox or the uh, extension housing which then the tail shaft comes out the back. So to put you in perspective, starter motor sits on here. This part here bolts to the back of the engine. Your drive shafts come out either side here for the front wheel drive part. And then internally, out through the back is the tail shaft which connects to the rear diff. So there you have it, the Subaru CVT transmission, constantly variable transmission. You're going to see a lot more of these transmissions across the range um, with all sorts of different brands. Uh, Nissan use it in the uh, Pulsar Triple S range is an option. And of course Subaru offer it in the turbo diesel, the turbo petrol and the non-turbo cars. And you need to be aware that they are a very tricky transmission with very, very special needs to make sure that they are looked after to give you maximum reliability and performance. So there you have it. If you want some technical updates, follow us here. I'll put some still photos of this transmission so you can have a look at the parts individually. If you're looking for more information, follow us on Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. Of course, if you've got a CVT transmission out of a Subaru or an SST transmission out of a Mitsubishi, we do do the repairs here in our own workshop and we'd love to help you. But for now, no matter where you are in the world, I hope this information has helped you learn a little bit more. I'm Brent Middleton. Thanks for watching.